PeachyCam has made steady progress in terms of its user interface, and the 2014 release builds upon this. There are a number of new improvements, including the new ability to rename features that start with numbers or use other characters such as percentages. We've also introduced anti-aliasing for the tools and holders in the display window, with an option to turn it off should your graphics card or driver not support it. We also provide more information in the log file with respect to the import via Delcom Exchange, as well as the ability to send the log files for, for Delcom support analysis. In this example we're going to have a look at some of these new features. So the first case you can see here we've got a part with a number of features already pre-created. And in this case you can see down the side we've got the default naming convention for all those feature types. Now in the first instance these holes I'm going to have a look at the hole and you can see here it's a 10 millimeter diameter. I want to provide that information with regards to the pattern name. To rename I can either right click and choose rename or I can choose F2 if I want the quick shortcut. Once I rename I can change my name and in this case I'm going to enter the size of the holes which is 10 millimeter and say hole pattern. Note I've added spaces and also started with a number. Select OK and it's happily accepted the name of that feature now in the part view. I can also put additional information and in this case we can have a look at this pocket and note in this case if I go to the roughing area into milling you can see we've got high speed machining maximum tool overload has been set to 10%. I want to include that information in the name of the feature. Let's go ahead and do this just by simply re-clicking, rename and in this case I'm going to call this pocket one and then in this case I'm going to set 10% overload. Say OK and you'll notice the percentage value and the numbers are written in the name of the feature. Care must be taken though when naming these features that the output is not put into your NC code or that your NC code supports the additional characters. As well as this we've introduced the anti-aliasing for the tools. If I go into the roughing, select the tool and in this case you can see we've got slightly rougher edges if we make our way around the tool profile. The anti-aliasing smooths those edges out. To do this we simply go to our options, surface shading and you'll notice there is a new checkbox that says anti-alias the tool window. We have this option to turn it on or off in case your graphics card or driver doesn't support it. If it doesn't support the anti-aliasing you'll simply see a grey space where the tool is. Uncheck this option and the tool will reappear as normal. In this case I'm going to turn it on. I accept the fact that it'll only do it when I open the window again. Back into the roughing tab, open the tool and you should now be able to see we've got a much smoother profile around the tool geometry. The final thing on this example is just to look at the export of the log files. Log files can be useful when doing any kind of support analysis because it tells us information about how the software was being used at the time. In this case we go to the send options and you'll notice there is a checkbox that we have for crash performance logs. We can either group this together as a separate zip file or as individual files. Note there may be multiple crash files and log files so in this case we want to include those and we put those all in a single zip file with the other files. As soon as I say OK we'll get an email that we can send to our support representative and in this case you'll see I've got my feature cam file, the posts that I'm using and also the logs grouped together in a single zip file. This makes the support process much easier for us to analyse any issues you may be having with the software.